Inside this package, there are 24 interlocking pieces that you can use to make hundreds of block trimmers. Let me just open it up real quick for you. It comes in a reusable plastic case and it has a brief set of instructions. There are much more detailed instructions available on the website, but you have everything you need to know to get started with making even blocks, quarter inch blocks, or half inch blocks. So if you want your block to be five by five, five and a quarter by five and a quarter, or five and a half by five and a half, this is how you mix up the corners so that you can mix and match the corners to get the exact size that you want. Let me show you one of my blocks that is in progress. I have this block that is approximately six and a half inches, but you can see that it isn't perfectly even. And we all know that perfect blocks make much better piecing in the end. So what I'm gonna do is start with my four A pieces, my four corner pieces that are A's, and then I'm gonna put one inch pieces in between, and this is gonna get me six and a half inches by six and a half inches. Notice the letters are facing up so that I can read them. If you have them upside down, they're not gonna fit properly. You wanna make sure that you can read the numbers when you put them together. And here's my last piece. Sometimes they will be a little tight going from top to bottom. So sometimes you wanna just switch the side and put the other one on top. But these are all fitting together perfectly. Now, take a look in the corners here. You can see that I can line up the corner of my block piecing with the marks on my ruler pieces. So this way I can line up every block perfectly and evenly. So the edges, we're gonna line up the edges over here and we're gonna line up the corner here. And then this is a time that you definitely wanna use your um, rotating mat to trim the edges. This one would be a much bigger trim and just rotate, trim, rotate, trim. What if I wanted to, I'm gonna put this back. What if I wanted this to be a six and a quarter inch block instead of six and a half? It's easy to make that change. We just take out the A corners, two of the A corners, and we put in two B corners. The B corners are two and a half inches on the outside instead of two and three quarter inches, like the A pieces. See, so now I have six and a quarter by six and a quarter. And again, I can line up, I can use the notches in my rulers to line up my markings to get it perfectly even, and then trim, trim with my cutter, trim, 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 and be done. Okay, here I have an example of a block that is oversized so that I can trim it down to the exact size that I need. In this case, I want it to be eight and a half inches. So I'm gonna use four of my A blocks to get half inch measurement, and then a three inch block in between to get me my full eight inches. I've put some of these pieces together in advance to make it go a little quicker. So we've got our three inch, our A, three inch, A, three inch. Put it all together. Now, the beauty of these lines in the corner is, see this diagonal line? I line that up with the diagonal of my block, line up this with the diagonal. When I have all four diagonals lined up, then my block is gonna be perfect. So we just nudge a little here and there. Now, you could trim it just like this, trim with your rotary cutter, turn, trim, turn, but if you're anything like I am, I like to put together a whole bunch of pieces. I do chain piecing and then I do all of my ironing and then all of my trimming at once. So in order to make it easier, I like to use a little piece of green tape to hold these together. This is just masking tape. And of course I like to use green because it sort of matches. But um, 
the key here is to use a piece of tape that's no wider than one inch so that you can still see the markings on the side. And remember, you want to use the joints as markings as well. Each mark is a quarter inch. But sometimes the measurements don't matter as much as just aligning things with your quilt block, like the corners here. So I'm just going to put the tape in all the spots, all the joints. You want to make sure that your tape piece is long enough to actually hold the pieces together when you lift it up. I'll show you in a second. If they were too short, they would pop apart maybe, but see, now I can move my ruler around. I can reuse it many, many times, and it's really easy to take the tape off. And if you want to do different sizes, you can actually reuse your tape. Just put it on the edge of your table and you can reuse the tape many times. Okay, so we're going to line up these corners again. Make sure all the lines, the diagonal lines are lined up with our block. And then we use our rotary cutter and our wonderful rotating mat. What did we do before these were invented? Third side, fourth side, and now I have a perfectly trimmed, perfect eight and a half inch block. Perfectly centered, corner to corner, nice and easy. And I can repeat this over and over without any stress or mistakes. Sometimes you want to fussy cut a perfect rose out of a piece of fabric or whatever design you're working with. So in this case, we could do a two and a half inch block by putting together two of the A pieces because in the center it's one and a quarter inches. So two of those is two and a half inches. So we put four A blocks together and we have two and a half inch square in the middle. So this is perfect. However, we have a quarter inch seam allowance. So we probably don't want this to be two and a half inches. We probably want this to be three inches. So I'm going to switch this over to B blocks. The B blocks have one inch pieces on them. So that gives you two inches and then you add a one inch piece in the center to get your three inches. And I've already pre-assembled it so I can just set it down and see you use the lines of your ruler to make sure that you're happy with how the flower is positioned and then you take your rotary cutter put it in the slots again remember we're going to use a 45 millimeter or smaller rotary cutter because the 60 millimeter is a little too big for these slots one more cut and we have a perfect rose that will be two and a half inches perfect when it's sewn in. Okay, sometimes you don't want to do a square. Sometimes you need to do a great big rectangle. My son's birthday is coming up and it doesn't matter how old the I are, they always like to have it be a special day. So I'm making a special placemat for him. And what better way to make his place special than to have happy birthday Drew in the middle of his brand new placemat. So I'm putting pieces of tape together. Whenever you're using more than three pieces together, I highly recommend that you tape the pieces down so that they stay put. Because when you're using your rotary cutter, you don't want things moving out of the way while you're cutting. Okay, so we've got our strip set up. We are going to center. I'm going to just kind of eyeball it, sort of center where I want this to be. And using this line and this line, get them so that I like how they look. And then I can use my rotary cutter in the center. Now remember, I'm allowing a quarter inch seam. So I'm going to go down just a little bit. I'm going to use a quarter inch seam and then cut all the way around. I don't have enough room to spin my mat without hitting the camera, so I'm not going to cut the whole thing right now, but you get the idea.